Newport News Shipbuilding NNS, a division of Huntington Ingalls Industries, is the largest industrial employer in Virginia, and sole designer, builder and refueler of United States Navy aircraft carriers and one of two providers of U.S. Navy submarines. Founded as the Chesapeake Dry Dock and Construction Co., in 1886, Newport News Shipbuilding has built more than 800 ships, including both naval and commercial ships. Located in the city of Newport News, their facilities span more than 550 acres 2.2 square kilometers, strategically positioned in one of the great harbors of the East Coast. The shipyard is a major employer not only for the Lower Virginia Peninsula, but also portions of Hampton Road south of the James River and the harbor, portions of the Middle Peninsula region, and even some northeastern counties of North Carolina. The shipyard is building the aircraft carriers USS John F. Kennedy CVN-79 and USS Enterprise CVN-80. In 2013, Newport News Shipbuilding began the deactivation of the first nuclear-powered aircraft carrier, USS Enterprise CVN-65, which it also built. Newport News Shipbuilding also performs refueling and complex overhaul RCOH work on Nimitz-class aircraft carriers. This is a four-year vessel renewal program that not only involves refueling of the vessel's nuclear reactors but also includes modernization work. The yard has completed RCOH for four Nimitz-class carriers USS Nimitz, USS Dwight D. Eisenhower, USS Carl Vinson and USS Theodore Roosevelt. As of May 2016 this work was underway for the fifth Nimitz-class vessel, USS Abraham Lincoln. As of November 2017 this work was underway for the sixth Nimitz-class vessel, USS George Washington. Topic History Industrialist Collis P. Huntington (1821–1900) provided crucial funding to complete the Chesapeake and Ohio Railroad (C&O) from Richmond, Virginia, to the Ohio River in the early 1870s. Although originally built for general commerce, this C&O rail link to the Midwest was soon also being used to transport bituminous coal from the previously isolated coal fields, adjacent to the New River and the Kanawha River in West Virginia. In 1881, the peninsula extension of the C&O was built from Richmond down the Virginia Peninsula to reach a new coal pier on Hampton Roads in Warwick County near the small unincorporated community of Newport News Point. However, building the railroad and coal pier was only the first part of Huntington's dreams for Newport News. Topic. The shipyard's early years In 1886, Huntington built a shipyard to repair ships servicing this transportation hub. In 1891 Newport News Shipbuilding and Drydock Company delivered its first ship, the tugboat Dorothy. By 1897 NNS had built three warships for the U.S. Navy, USS Nashville, Wilmington and Helena. When Collis died in 1900, his nephew Henry E. Huntington inherited much of his uncle's fortune. He also married Collis' widow Arabella Huntington, and assumed Collis's leadership role with Newport News Shipbuilding and Drydock Company. Under Henry Huntington's leadership, growth continued. In 1906 the revolutionary HMS Dreadnought launched a great naval race worldwide. Between 1907 and 1923, Newport News built six of the U.S. Navy's total of 22 dreadnoughts, USS Delaware, Texas, Pennsylvania, Mississippi, Maryland and West Virginia. All but the first were in active service in World War II. In 1907 President Theodore Roosevelt sent the Great White Fleet on its round-the-world voyage. NNS had built seven of its 16 battleships. 
In 1914 NNS built SS Medina for the Mallory Steamship Company, as MV Dulos she was until 2009 the world's oldest active ocean faring passenger ship. Topic Newport News and the Shipyard In the early years, leaders of the Newport News community and those of the shipyard were virtually interchangeable. Shipyard President Walter A. Post served from March 9, 1911 to February 12, 1912, when he died. Earlier, he had come to the area as one of the builders of the C&O Railways Terminals, and had served as the first mayor of Newport News after it became an independent city in 1896. It was on March 14, 1914 that Albert Lloyd Hopkins, a young New Yorker trained in engineering, succeeded Post as president of the company. In May 1915 while traveling to England on shipyard business aboard RMS Lusitania, Albert L. Hopkins' tenure and life ended prematurely when that ship was torpedoed and sunk by a German U-boat off Queenstown on the Irish coast. His assistant, Frederick Gauntlet, was also on board, but was able to swim to safety. Homer Lenoir Ferguson was company vice president when Hopkins died, and assumed the presidency the following August. He saw the company through both world wars, became a noted community leader, and was a co-founder of the Mariner's Museum with Archer Huntington. He served until July 31, 1946, after World War II had ended on both the European and Pacific fronts. Just northwest of the shipyard, Hilton Village, one of the first planned communities in the country, was built by the federal government to house shipyard workers in 1918. The planners met with the wives of shipyard workers. Based on their input 14 house plans were designed for the projected 500 English village-style homes. After the war, in 1922, Henry Huntington acquired it from the government, and helped facilitate the sale of the homes to shipyard employees and other local residents. Three streets there were named after Post, Hopkins, and Ferguson. <laughs> Navy orders during and after World War I The Lusitania incident was among the events that brought the United States into World War I. Between 1918 and 1920, NNS delivered 25 destroyers, and after the war, it began building aircraft carriers. USS Ranger was delivered in 1934, and NNS went on to build Yorktown and Enterprise. Topic. Ocean liners After World War I NNS completed a major reconditioning and refurbishment of the ocean liner SS Leviathan. Before the war she had been the German liner Vaterland, but the start of hostilities found her laid up in New York Harbor and she had been seized by the U.S. government in 1917 and converted into a troopship. War duty and age meant that all wiring, plumbing, and interior layouts were stripped and redesigned while her hull was strengthened and her boilers converted from coal to oil while being refurbished. Virtually a new ship emerged from NNS in 1923, and SS Leviathan became the flagship of United States lines. In 1927 NNS launched the world's first significant turbo-electric ocean liner, Panama Pacific Line 17833 GRTSS California. At the time she was also the largest merchant ship yet built in the United States, although she was a modest size compared with the biggest European liners of her era. NNS launched California's sister ships Virginia in 1928 and Pennsylvania in 1929. NNS followed them by launching two even larger turboelectric liners for Dollar Steamship Company, the 21,936 GRTSS President Hoover in 1930, followed by her sister President Coolidge in 1931. 
SS America was launched in 1939 and entered service with United States lines shortly before World War II but soon returned to the shipyard for conversion to a troopship, USS West Point. <laughs> Navy orders before and during World War II By 1940 the Navy had ordered a battleship, seven more aircraft carriers and four cruisers. During World War II, NNS built ships as part of the U.S. government's emergency shipbuilding program, and swiftly filled requests for "...liberty ships," that were needed during the war. It founded the North Carolina Shipbuilding Company, an emergency yard on the banks of the Cape Fear River and launched its first Liberty ship before the end of 1941, building 243 ships in all, including 186 Liberties. For its contributions during the war, the Navy awarded the company its E. Pennant for Excellence in Shipbuilding. NNS ranked 23rd among United States corporations in the value of wartime production contracts. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Post-war ships. In the post-war years, NNS built the famous passenger liner SS United States, which set a transatlantic speed record that still stands today. In 1954 NNS, Westinghouse and the Navy developed and built a prototype nuclear reactor for a carrier propulsion system. NNS designed the USS Enterprise in 1960. In 1959 NNS launched its first nuclear-powered submarine, USS Shark as well as the ballistic missile submarine USS Robert E. Lee. In the 1970s, NNS launched two of the largest tankers ever built in the Western Hemisphere and also constructed three liquefied natural gas carriers, at over 390,000 deadweight tons, the largest ever built in the United States. NNS and Westinghouse Electric Company jointly form offshore power systems to build floating nuclear power plants for Public Service Electric and Gas Company. In the 1980s, NNS produced a variety of Navy products, including Nimitz-class nuclear aircraft carriers and Los Angeles-class nuclear attack submarines. Since 1999 the shipyard has produced only warships for the Navy. <laughs> <laughs> Submarine building problems In 2007, the U.S. Navy found that workers had used incorrect metal to fuse together pipes and joints on submarines under construction and this could have led to cracking and leaks. In 2009 it was found that bolts and fasteners in weapons handling systems on four Navy submarines, including New Mexico, North Carolina, Missouri, and California, were installed incorrectly, delaying the launching of the boats while the problems were corrected. <laughs> Mergers, realignment, and spin-off In 1968, Newport News merged with Tenneco Corporation. In 1996, Tenneco initiated a spin-off of Newport News into an independent company, Newport News Shipbuilding. On the 7th of November 2001, Northrop Grumman entered an agreement to purchase Newport News Shipbuilding for a total of $2.6 billion. This acquisition created a $4 billion shipyard called Northrop Grumman Newport News. On the 28th of January 2008, Northrop Grumman Corporation realigned its two shipbuilding sectors, Northrop Grumman Newport News and Northrop Grumman Ship Systems, into a single sector called Northrop Grumman Shipbuilding. On March 15, 2011 Northrop Grumman announced the spin-off of this sector into a separate company, Huntington Ingalls Industries, Inc., and on March 31, began operating as a separate company and publicly trading under the symbol HII on the New York Stock Exchange.
In 2016, Newport News Shipbuilding perform works on deactivation and the nuclear fuel removing of Enterprise's reactor removed by Huntington Ingalls Industries under a $745 million contract with U.S. Navy. Topic ships built Ships built at the Newport News Yard include, Tugboat Dorothy, the shipyard's first vessel, delivered in 1891, on display in Yard USS Kearsarge, BB-5, lead battleship of its class, launched in 1898 USS Kentucky, BB-6, Kearsarge class battleship, launched in 1898 USS Illinois, BB-7, lead battleship of its class, launched in 1898 USS Arkansas, Arkansas BM-7, lead monitor of its class, and one of the last monitors built for the U.S. Navy launched in 1900 USS Maryland ACR-8, Pennsylvania class cruiser, launched in 1903 USS West Virginia ACR-5, Pennsylvania class cruiser, launched in 1903 USS Virginia BB-13, lead battleship of its class, launched in 1904 Ferry Binghampton, launched in 1904 5 one of six identical screw-propelled, double-ended ferryboats built by the shipyard in 1904–05 to designs by Gardner and Cox, naval architects. Was the last surviving steam ferry built to serve New York Harbor when it was dismantled in 2017. USS Minnesota BB-22, Connecticut-class battleship, launched in 1905 USS North Carolina ACR-12, Tennessee-class cruiser, launched in 1906 USS Montana ACR-13, Tennessee-class cruiser, launched in 1906 SS Georgia a crude oil tanker, launched in 1908 USS Delaware BB-28, lead battleship of its class, launched in 1908 USS Proteus AC9, Proteus class Collier, launched in 1911 USS Texas BB35, battleship of the New York class, launched in 1912, the only surviving dreadnought battleship. USS Nerus AC10, Proteus class Collier, launched in 1913 cargo ship SS Medina for the Mallory Steamship Company in 1914, currently the passenger ship MV Dulos Foss, in service until 2009 USS Pennsylvania BB38, lead battleship of its class, launched in 1915 USS Mississippi BB41, New Mexico class battleship, launched in 1970. 17 Wix class destroyers Lamberton, Radford, Montgomery, Breeze, Gamble, Ramsey for the Navy in 1918 USS Maryland BB46 Colorado class battleship launched in 1920 USS West Virginia Colorado class battleship launched in 1921 turbo electric ocean liners for Panama Pacific Line SS California launched in 1927 SS Virginia launched in 1920 SS Pennsylvania, launched in 1929 USS Houston CA-30, Northampton class cruiser, launched in 1929 USS Augusta CA-31, Northampton class cruiser, launched in 1930 Turbo Electric Ocean Liners for Dollar Steamship Company, SS President Hoover, launched in 1930 SS President Coolidge, launched in 1931 Turbo Electric Passenger and Cargo Liners for United Fruit Company, later Mizar class stores ships, SS Talamanca, later USS Talamanca, launched in 1931 SS Cherokee, later USS Torres, launched in 1932 SS Jamaica, later USS Ariel, launched in 1933 USS Ranger CV4, the first purpose-built aircraft carrier of the United States Navy, launched in 1933 USS Boise CL-47, Brooklyn class class cruiser, launched in 1936 Yorktown class aircraft carriers, USS Yorktown CV-5, launched in 1936 USS Enterprise CV-6, launched in 1936 USS Hornet CV-8, launched in 1940 USS Mustin DD-413, Sims class destroyer, launched in 1938 USS Russell DD-414, Sims class destroyer 
destroyer, launched in 1938 USS Indiana BB-58, South Dakota-class battleship, launched in 1941 Essex-class aircraft carriers, USS Essex CV-9, launched in 1942 USS Yorktown CV-10, launched in 1943 USS Intrepid CV-11, launched in 1943 USS Hornet CV-12, launched in 1943, preserved as the USS Hornet Museum in Alameda, California. USS Franklin CV-13, launched in 1943. USS Ticonderoga CV-14, launched in 1944. USS Randolph CV-15, launched in 1944. USS Boxer CV-21, launched in 1944. USS Leyte CV-32, launched in 1945. Liberty ship transports for the Allies during World War II Midway-class aircraft carriers USS Midway CV-41, launched in 1945 USS Coral Sea CV-43, launched in 1946 Ocean liners for United States lines SS America, launched in 1939 SS United States, launched in 1951, holder of the Blue Ribbon Forrestal class aircraft carriers USS Forrestal, CVA-59, launched in 1954 USS Ranger, CVA-61, launched in 1956 Submarine USS Shark SSN 591 in 1959, the Yard's first nuclear-powered submarine. Ballistic missile submarine USS Robert E. Lee SSBN 601, launched in 1959. USS Enterprise CVN 65, launched in 1960, the first nuclear-powered aircraft carrier. USS America CV66 launched in 1964 USS John F Kennedy CV67 launched in 1967 All 10 Nimitz class nuclear powered aircraft carriers USS Nimitz CVN68 launched in 1972 USS Dwight D. Eisenhower CVN-69, launched in 1975 USS Carl Vinson CVN-70, launched in 1980 USS Theodore Roosevelt CVN-71, launched in 1984 USS Abraham Lincoln CVN-72, launched in 1988 USS George Washington CVN-73, launched in 1990 USS John C. Stennis CVN-74, launched in 1993 USS Harry S. Truman CVN-75, launched in 1996 USS Ronald Reagan CVN-76, launched in 2001 USS George H. W. Bush CVN 77 launched in 2006 Gerald R Ford class nuclear powered aircraft carriers USS Gerald R Ford CVN 78 launched in 2013 USS John F Kennedy CVN 79 under construction USS Enterprise CVN 80 under construction Los Angeles class nuclear powered submarines Virginia class nuclear powered submarines Virginia class nuclear powered cruisers USS Virginia CGN38 launched in 1974 USS Texas CGN39 launched in 1975 USS Mississippi CGN40 launched in 1976 USS Arkansas CGN 41 launched in 1978 USTS Empire State V topic 
Gallery Ships rebuilt SS Jacona, the first sea-going electric power plant for emergencies Sea Witch, wrecked ship that was salvaged and her still operational stern and machinery spaces rebuilt and used in the construction of a new chemical tanker, the Chemical Discoverer, later renamed Chemical Pioneer. <laughs> 